Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of What's on My Desk. Today's lineup of watches couldn't be any different from another, nor do they carry any type of theme. It's just, again, something that happens to come across my desk. I did bring one extra watch for comparison, but mostly we're gonna talk about what I feel is an iconic Omega piece, which is the Apollo Soyuz Omega Speedmaster. Uh, we're going to talk about the Quorum Admiral Cup Tides watch. I also brought a very old Quantin Perpetual Skeleton from AP, and for comparison, I brought an old Gerald Genta Skeleton timepiece from the same era. So where should we start? July 17th, 1975, the iconic Apollo Soyuz mission into space. This was the first joint US and Soviet Union space flight. It involved the docking of an Apollo Command Service Module and a Soviet Soyuz 19 capsule. Contact. The mission ceremoniously marked the end of the space race that had begun in 1957 with the Sputnik launch. Now, the mission included both joint and separate scientific experiments, including an engineered eclipse of the sun by Apollo to allow Soyuz to take photographs of the solar corona and provided useful engineering experience for future joint U.S.-Russian space flights, such as the shuttle dash uh, the Mir program and the International Space Station. Apollo had three people on it, which was Thomas Stafford, Vance Brand, and Donald Slayton. And the Russian ships they used had Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov aboard their ship. So why did I give you this little bit of history uh, background? Well, because it directly relates to the watch that I just showed you. This is the watch that Omega came out with in 2010 to commemorate, I'm guessing, their 30, what is it, 75 to 2010, 35th year anniversary, although they don't mention it that way. Uh, let's talk about the watch for a second. Meteor red dial is the one thing that makes this watch stand out. And it's not just the sub dials as it seems here because they stand out because they made them silver. The entire dial is actually meteorite. The black part of the dial is also meteorite. As I just mentioned, if you look at the back of the watch, it actually depicts the scene of the two spacecrafts meeting. And it does carry the names of all these guys in the back. Now, what's interesting is that uh, uh, the name Apollo is in English and the name Soyuz is in Russian. And the names that I just mentioned are also done the same way. There you see Stafford, Grand, and Slayton. And then you also see Leonov and Kubasov. Of course, I can read Russian, so take my word for it. This is exactly what it says in the back of this watch. And there you can see the date, July 17th, 1975. Why is this watch special to me? I'll tell you. You guys always ask me about the Mega Snoopy watch that trades at some ridiculous amounts of money right now because it's considered to be the collectible to have when it comes to Omega and as well as space programs. Well, I think this is the second best underdog and I think this is a better bang for your dollar because these watches are still trading around that eight to $10,000 price range uh, versus uh, Snoopy's. I've, been, I've seen them trading as high as 25,000 at this point, I think. Um, and personally, I think it's a more attractive watch and I think that uh, the history behind this particular watch and this be behind this particular event is definitely just as worthy as the history behind the Snoopy watch. One of those watches that I'm tempted to keep, <laughs> to be honest with you, instead of putting it up for sale, obviously your classic Speedmaster design, everything about this watch says Speedmaster from far, from short, you exactly know what this is. For those that are real Omega buffs will actually know that this is the policy use watch because of the meteorite dial. And obviously, if you look in the back of the watch, but uh, even at a glance, those that know Omega know exactly what this watch is. So yeah, absolutely love this watch. The price that it's trading at today certainly should make it a future collectible. And, and one very important note to make, uh, July 17th, 1975 was a very, very special date because on July 17th, 1975, Yours truly was exactly one month and eight days old. That's right, I was born May 9th, 1975. And uh, this watch came out uh, just about a month after the fact. So yeah, that makes it even that much more special. Quorum Tides. Uh, I, my last episode, I talk about some iconic pieces and, and one of the pieces that I brought on was the Quorum Bubble, if you guys remember. I briefly talked about the Admiral Cup collection from Quorum. So this is what the Quorum Admiral's Cup has evolved to in today's day and age, and this is the Quorum Admiral Cup. I spoke about this previously before. 1957 was the first Admiral's Cup race. Three years after that, 
uh, Corum came up with the Admiral's Cut Watch. Of course, it didn't look anything like that besides the shape. Why am I so impressed with this watch? Well, because it's a watch that shows you the times, and I quote Corum on this, and I agree with him 100%. This is an icon among sea lovers. And what's not to love? Well, first and foremost, look at the, it's a 45 millimeter watch. Predominantly blue colors everywhere for obvious reasons. I love the electric blue on this. Uh, before I get into the functionality of the tide specifically of this particular watch, I'm gonna need these, cause I'm getting old, 1975, right? So at nine o'clock, you have the strength of the current and the height of the tide, right? Then you have strength of the tide up at 12 o'clock along with the phases of the moon, which is obviously directly related, as well as the time of the tide in the 24 hour period. How useful is that to somebody that sails? Absolutely useful and this actually works. I know people that get out there and sail and they utilize this watch instead of their instruments. Uh, let's look at the back of the watch. Automatic movement, what's to mention about the back of the watch is the, I like the fact that this is a full rotor rather than the usual half moon. So that is actually very appealing to me. I just kind of I just kind of like that look to be honest with you. I like the fact that the blue travels outside the dial onto the side of the case and then translates back into the back of the case. Standard quorum deployment buckle, rubber strap for obvious reasons. If you're gonna be out in the water, this watch is obviously water resistance. Definitely something for you to take on the boat with you. So Again, the Admiral's Cup is an icon in its own. And again, when I talked about Quorum, I only talked about the bubble specifically, because that's what I brought on. But uh, the Admiral's Cup is certainly another icon from Coleman alongside with the Quorum Golden Bridge, which I actually forgot to mention in the last episode. It definitely deserved a little bit of attention. So the Quorum Golden Bridge is also an iconic timepiece as far as I'm concerned. I believe it was uh, Vincent Calabrese that sold him, sold Quorum the Golden Bridge technology or whatever he came up with. Um, but uh, long story short, I'm gonna put this watch on my wrist and the reason I'm gonna do that is because this watch is extremely comfortable to wear and it sits extremely well on the wrist because of the design, sort of that lugless design where the strap actually seems like it comes out of the, come right out, comes right out of the case and there's virtually no lugs. Sits extremely well for a 45 millimeter watch. Again, allows a guy like myself with a smaller wrist to get away with a bigger size watch. Light, comfortable, water resistance, sporty looking, a plus on this Quorum. Absolutely love this particular Tides Admiral's Cup from Quorum. Uh, last but not least, I'm gonna go back in time some more, although I, I have, I did speak history here, but these particular watches actually go back in history. And the one watch I wanna talk to you about specifically is the Audemars Piguet Classique Quantine Perpetual. This is reference 2566BA, I believe. BA stands for yellow gold, of course. And let me show you this absolutely stunning and gorgeous watch. I mean, this is classic watchmaking at its finest. This watch, this design could be called timeless because the inner workings and the outer workings of this entire watch are on display for your viewing pleasure. Full Quantine Perpetual Calendar. I don't know how well this phone will show you how beautiful this particular movement is. Well, for one, I'm gonna put it up here so you guys see, you can see it right through it. But uh, on the outside, your standard indicators for a perpetual calendar along with the moon phase. Look at the back. This is where you really see the beautifully decorated movement. This is when companies in that era did their best to show off their decorative, their decoration skills when it comes to their particular movement. And again, I'm hoping that the camera can pick this up well enough for you guys to see just how gorgeous, oh, let me get the rotor on the other side, just how gorgeous this watch is. Almost feel like wearing it upside down when you look at the back of the watch, although the the front is just as gorgeous as the other. This type of watch served sort of as a base to some of the future stuff. If you look at current Royal Oak perpetual calendars, they don't look much different from what you see here. So why is this watch so special? Well, it's the time that it's from. Uh, this watch is a B serial, which actually is younger than the Royal Oak that I'm wearing because I told you the A serial, this A serial was made in 1972. B serial watches correspond from 1976 to 1979, where A serial is 1972 to 1975. Uh, and again, some dates do overlap, but approximately those are the dates. So this is the first classique 2120 caliber fully engraved movement from Audemars Piguet. And I've seen these in later versions. And often you see later versions of the swatch minus the sort of that mm, tie knot decorations on the side. It was just sort of a plain case. I have seen these watches in a C and a D serial, so they were made as late as early 90s, 1992. I think I've seen one go through Christie's, which was in 1992, again, minus the additional decorations on the bezel. Just a plain Jane one. Well, shouldn't really call these plain, but let's say a plain Jane bezel one. 
It's called Classique, and it should be called that because indeed this is a classic in my eyes. And I also brought a Gerald Gente timepiece with me, and the reason I brought that over is really not to talk about this Gerald. This is, again, this is an early Gerald Genta octo from the same time frame. And again, this is also, this is not a perpetual, this is just an automatic. And I'll show you the back of this timepiece. This is absolutely stunning and gorgeous as well. Again, fully decorated movement along with the rotor. Why did I bring this particular watch? I wanted to put them side by side and let you guys be the judge. Did Gerald Genta have any, do you think Gerald Genta had something to do with the design of the perpetual calendar? Because you know Gerald Genta worked for AP at the time. And uh, again, I'm not gonna answer that question. Again, I'll ask you to comment below if you think that this Octa has anything to do with this perpetual calendar. And, and that's the reason I brought the other watch with me. Uh, this watch wears small, uh, and I'm going to throw it on my wrist next to my Royal Oak just to give you an idea. But for the time this watch came out, and this was the perfect size for the watch. This was the going size for men's watches, and if you look at the two side by side, you can right away tell how avant-garde for the time the Royal Oak was just simply due to its size. This watch obviously wears super comfortable on the wrist just because it's small, it's light, even though it's made out of gold. So there you have it, a few watches that are completely different from one another, but I told you guys before, I don't script any of these things, nor do I prepare. Stuff comes across my desk, I grab it, I turn on the microphone, and I start talking about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed yet another episode of What's On My Desk Today. Any questions as usual, comment below, like, share, subscribe, do what you gotta do to get your friends involved if you enjoy my content. And I'll see you guys next week for more watch reviews and other videos.